Today we're using dirt to form curved shapes to make this concrete lounge chair. Now, we did use a little bit of linoleum in between, but uh, stay tuned, it's gonna be pretty awesome to see how it turns out. I'm gonna start by drawing the contours of the lounge chair. I start with a pencil, and once I've gotten the approximate proportions right, I draw it with a Sharpie. Now I just have to stack these two layers of three quarter inch plywood together and cut them out with my jigsaw. I screwed the pieces together just so they would be identical. I coated the plywood with water-based polyurethane so that I can reuse them again. Next I'm cutting some pieces of melamine. This is gonna serve as the perimeter for the mold. I screwed the plywood contours to the melamine and some two by lumber to the end panels. There's no bottom for the mold and I want to be relatively level. So I removed a few shrubs in my backyard, raked the ground even, and then used a tamper to compact the soil. When I checked the level, I saw that was a little bit off. So I just had to fill in some low spots and pack that down as well. I screwed the long side panels to the two by fours on the end panels and then added a couple two by six to reinforce everything. Now I'm ready to start filling the box with dirt. I added about six to eight inches of soil at a time and then packed it down with the tamper. We had some rain recently, so the soil was a little bit moist, but if I was doing this in the summer, I would have added some water. I kept adding additional layers of soil, and as I started to get to the top of the plywood, I had to sort of tamp it a little bit at an angle. I cut some scrap wood the width of the box, and that was a really handy tool to use as a scraper so they could get the packed earth consistent with the plywood. All that dirt packing started to bow the form out just a little bit. So this is where my Craig pocket hole jig really came in handy. Typically I associate pocket holes with furniture projects or cabinets, but they're actually really handy for concrete form work. If I would have just driven screws from the outside into these thin edges of plywood, it probably would have split the plywood or the screws would have just pulled out. But having the head of the screws going through these pre-drilled angled holes allowed me to really pull the mold back to parallel, which is important since we have about 400 pounds of packed earth and are gonna add about another 900 to 1,000 pounds of concrete. I got some scrap linoleum from Home Depot and it's really smooth on one side. It's about eighth of an inch thick and it's basically just a durable, flexible vinyl. I cut the pieces to the same width as the inside of the box and use spring clamps to hold the pieces in place. You can also cut the linoleum with a box cutter. Now I want the concrete to be sort of an ivory or bone color. So I just took some of the local sand and rinsed it. I'm just trying to wash off the organic particles of dirt, which really wasn't that hard because most of our dirt in the desert is sand. This is a real simple DIY concrete mix. I'm going with one part of white Portland cement to four parts of washed sand. I used about $45 worth of Portland cement, and it's pretty cool to think that the majority of this project is made with the most local of materials. I added water and mixed the concrete until it was about the consistency of lumpy oatmeal. Now in a project where you're dealing with dimensions this thick, it's really not that big of a deal if you overwater it a little bit. I was mixing it by myself, so I just used a tray. But if you got another person with you, you can actually mix this type of concrete directly on top of a tarp. And I'll show you that in a future video. I checked to make sure each one of the linoleum compartments was filled to the same level. Just did that with a ruler. My stockpile of washed sand started to run out near the end and the concrete was already curing. So for the last few batches, I just added in some of the local dirt. Now that's just gonna weaken it a little bit but that's gonna be at the bottom and these blobby chunks are really thick, so they're gonna be plenty strong. And even though I don't think it needs it, I just shoved in some rebar for the tallest chunk. I let the concrete cure for 72 hours and started to remove the mold. I really wasn't sure what to expect, but was super pleased when I saw how crisp and clean the curves were. The concrete was exactly the kind of bone ivory color that I wanted, and now my attention turned to moving these heavy chunks. This dirt is really well packed. It's pretty loamy, got a bit of sand in it, but with the moisture in the ground, it did pack pretty nicely. So we're just gonna start chipping away, and obviously this is a lot of weight of concrete, so we're gonna be careful. But we're gonna 
try to tip these segments out. Now we're also, it looks like they're joined, but I think those will just split apart right where the linoleum is. So let's see. These concrete blocks weigh between 200 and 400 pounds. So you want to be real careful when you're digging the dirt out from underneath them. You don't want them to roll onto an ankle or knee. The linoleum peeled off really easy. And that's typical with synthetic materials like vinyl or plastic. Even though I didn't have a mechanical vibrator, there weren't really that many bubbles in the surfaces. I filled in the holes, spread out the dirt from the form, and then got Shane to help me load these up onto a hand truck so we could move them into position. The reason why I didn't silicone the inside of the mold, because I knew the weight of the concrete was going to move the linoleum and that would have potentially torn away the silicone. And so I got these like little ridges of slightly rougher concrete, but those just chipped right off with a chisel. I'm going to sprinkle some local wildflower seeds around this because I think it's going to look really cool when there's plants growing up around these kind of dinosaur bone looking monoliths. I'm going to make more of these since I'm building a hotel and I need a lot of pool furniture. I think in the future I'll use plastic bottles and wire and rebar to make hollow cores for them just to reduce the weight. I also think though that the weight and durability of this design would make it well suited to use as a short wall that's actually inhabitable. If you want to block a little bit of pedestrian traffic or use them to prevent a vehicle from entering an inhabitable pedestrian area, I think this design would work great for that. So I'm absolutely thrilled with the process. It was so cool to kind of use the, the local ground to, to make the form work and then again use the rent sand as a raw material so that we didn't have to get all this bad concrete and, and schlep it over here. So super cool. I definitely think I need some sort of blobby side table, right? It's, it's surprisingly comfortable for concrete, but you need a place to set the drink, the phone, all that kind of stuff, maybe a little Bluetooth speaker. So I think some sort of simple blobby table to the side would be pretty great. Now, it'll probably sink into the ground a little bit too much. So if I was putting this in its final resting place already, I'd probably put a little bit of gravel underneath or even use the auger and do like a little quick, uh, fast curing concrete footing. But for now, it's, it's good. So I wanna rake the ground a little more, maybe water it, th throw a few uh, local seeds of plants. So I just think it'd be really cool if like there was a little bit of grass and desert plants sort of growing around it. So it just looked like this, this dinosaur bone island just in the middle of the desert. So I have it facing the morning sun because I plan on sort of getting my Huberman style sunlight uh, out here in the morning. And I don't know, I, I think the, the earth form concrete is really intriguing and highly encourage you guys to, to give it a shot. If you can make sandcastles, you can work with concrete. So thanks for watching. Uh, look for the links in the description box below. Shout out to Craig and Ryobi for sponsoring the project. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.